I survived 100 days in one block lucky block. Now if for whatever reason you don't know what one block is, basically take your normal Minecraft world and get rid of it. All of it, except one block. But this time around that one block is completely randomized to either help me or hurt me really, really badly. So join me as we attempt to survive 100 days on a completely unpredictable block. And as always, if you go on to enjoy this video at any point, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing because I would greatly appreciate it and it really does go a long way. But now without any further ado, let's get on to the video. So kicking things off this time around, on day one we started off with uh, quite a little bit more space than usual and that's probably for good reason. Because this book that I had in my hotbar told me to basically make the most of what the map gave me and build out from the actual main block, that way I don't meet my instant demise. So that's exactly what I did and then it came time for us to break our first block. Immediately finding a whole bunch of flowers that was quickly followed by me being completely encased in what seemed to be a temple of lucky blocks. So I used my genius brain and decided to tear up all the stairs and put them to use by building a small platform out at the end of the bridge. And then got to work on busting open the lucky blocks, finding some pearls and potion materials, followed by a bunch of lucky and unlucky potions that I immediately threw, getting a bunch of rabbits, some horses, and a ridiculous amount of enchanted bugs with two anvils to top things off. So I popped the anvils down and put efficiency 2 on my stone pickaxe. Now you may be wondering why, and my answer is because I can. After enchanting my pick, I found a wishing well that told me to throw a coin into it, but apparently I ended up using myself as the coin and, well, I must have some value because it gave me a literal beacon as my reward. Then after expanding out my island a little bit more, grabbing a couple of loot diamonds and guiding some horses to their new home, a dog decided to spawn in. Hello? Hey! Well, that's pl- Oh. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. You didn't know them long enough anyway, it's fine. Yep, he was immediately made the last of his kind. His species went from existing to pretty much extinct in a matter of about four seconds. One tree and a very loud firework later and we were pretty stacked on diamonds. So I chopped down the tree, crafted some diamond tools and then got straight back to mining through some lucky blocks. Getting a couple pieces of chainmail armor and a massive find of an enchantment table that I immediately put to use by enchanting my pick and sword. So, needless to say, things were off to a pretty good start, and that makes a change from my previous attempts that ended, uh, very, very badly. But, either way, I spent a while tidying up my inventory and making another chest to store the extra loot away, and then clearing off the Lucky Block Island to make room for the next mining session. That started out very, very lucrative, with me getting a bunch of XP and a dragon egg, that was then followed by a lucky chicken who wasn't really lucky at all, considering his position in life doomed to fall slowly to his voidy demise. I'm sorry my clucky friend, but uh, I, I don't think I'll remember you, I'm not gonna lie. Now that chicken may not have been lucky, but I certainly was, finding half a set of enchanted diamond armor along with a bunch of XP and my guy Bob right here who met the same fate as the chicken. However, all good things must come to an end and uh, this guy definitely ruined my night, forcing me to cower away in fear in hopes of them flying away. That he eventually did, but let me tell you. This guy right here stuck around all night, just flailing around down there doing who knows what, harassing me all night until he eventually succumbed to gravity and fell into the void. On the morning of day two, I left my hidey hole and began breaking more blocks, sadly losing what would have been a very useful villager in the process. But I guess that's okay though, because I got some rainbow sheep. Woo! I'm sure these guys are great and they're just going to be as useful as the villager would, surely. Should have been you who fell, not him. I hate you! After finding a bunch of annoying bats, we were greeted by another temple when I noticed some string left over from a previous block. So I grabbed all of it, getting enough string to make two pieces of wool that I then dyed blue with lapis and combined with some blue wool that I got from the rainbow sheep to make a bed. Now phantoms literally have no power. They would have been a pretty big threat to me, but now I'll probably never see them. After clearing up the island of lucky blocks, I continued breaking them to find some end portal frames that was just an absolutely insanely massive find, as well as a load more enchanted bugs and a very, very near death experience. One block more and I'd have been down there with the chicken. Oh, also there was an imposter on the block below me. After finding more end portal frames and a giant, we ended off the night pretty well, getting a bunch of spawn eggs and enough portal frames for us to go to the end whenever we want. Now, I did end up getting trapped in an obsidian cube and had to spend most of the night mining that up. However, it did come in super useful to secure the floor around the lucky block, that way it can't blow up now. 
So, after spending the night breaking and placing obsidian, on the morning of day 3 I organized my storage a little bit and then got straight back on with the block mining, finding this absolute stain of existence that ended up going straight into the void where it belongs. Now, what I thought would be a bad day ended up taking a turn and giving me this OP hero villager who I bought some diamond pants from before trapping him on a boat because he's just too valuable to lose. Once the villager was secured away, it was back to mining again, finding another dragon egg that I added to my collection, and a couple of diamond blocks that I broke down into diamonds and used to fund the final pieces of armor from the villager. And now we're fully decked out on day 3. It's kinda weird and I'm 100% gonna keep forgetting that I have the armor on, but uh, hey, I'm not gonna complain. After finding myself trapped inside of a yet another obsidian water cube, I decided to make a bucket and grab the water from there to make an infinite water source, because I feel like a water bucket in this is gonna be extremely useful. Then I had to spend most of the day clearing out the obby from the mining island, storing it away, and finally heading to bed. On day 4 when I woke up I'd started to think of a way to get more dirt because apparently I'd lost most of the stuff that I spawned with and now I've only got 2. But that's okay because I learned a while ago that 2 dirt is all you need. Because so long as you have access to gravel you can combine 2 dirt with 2 gravel and make 4 coarse dirt which then when you use a hoe or use a shovel on will turn back into normal dirt. And the only downside being that you lose the gravel but I don't really need the gravel and that makes everything super super efficient. Now, after having that absolutely big brain idea, I decided to build up a nether portal, but really quickly realized that I had absolutely no way to light it. So I took a quick look through my very messy storage and found a flame book that I thought could possibly work, but I didn't really have too high hopes for it. But with this possible solution, a new problem arose as uh, arrows. I, I don't have any of them and I can't craft them, so that's, uh, that's the new problem. So I checked to see if I could make a fire charge and uh, nope. No, I can't. So it was back to mining the lucky block in search of anything that can help me get to the nether. Now I did find a wither skelly skull along with a beacon and some crispy cats. <laughs> where's your nine lives now? Oh look, it's another villager. However, you're not trading me arrows, so I'm not interested. Okay, I'm getting really sick of these things now. Uh, I'm not going to mine the whole thing. I'm just going to mine a hole through the middle. Holy mother of God, what is that? Oh, uh, not the big zombie, the, the child. I, I hate them. However, I do love cows, especially lucky ones. Now, don't ask me why he's lucky, I have no clue. Maybe I can get some lucky milk. Be gone with you, pest! Well, that wasn't nice, but it was a good thing that I used obsidian for the floor. After repairing up the floor, I made a tiny platform off the side of the island in hopes of some skelly spawning during the night so that I can actually get some arrows. However, I, I literally sat here all night without finding any. So, after waiting up all night, on the morning of day 5, it was straight back to mining, getting yet another beacon, and finally a whole bunch of arrows, which is probably the single luckiest thing to happen to me so far. However, what wasn't lucky is all these mobs that spawned from my lucky bow. It took me by surprise, and like I said earlier, I kind of forgot that I was decked out in diamond armor, so they really scared me. But once I realized that they could barely even scratch me, I dealt with them pretty easily before then chopping down my tree, putting flame on my bow, and shooting the portal only for it to do absolutely nothing. Well, I guess tune in next week to Minecraft Mythbusters to see what we take on next. Now, with that failure out of the way, it was back to mining the lucky block in search of any other way to make fire. And for some reason, I really don't think that this slime block bouncy castle is going to help with that. And this atrocious, annoying thing definitely won't help. Just take a look at this stupid thing that spawned in and blew up my fences. Uh, great. And then it was followed by this even stupider thing that spawned in, did big damage, but then I guess just left for the next world. And then this guy showed up again, but uh, he met the same fate as the magma cube because apparently his flight didn't work. Now by day 6, I was getting kind of scared to break any more lucky blocks, but I really don't have any other choice, so I kinda have to do it. But to my surprise, it was a pretty chill mining session this time around, finding some prismarine, some ender chests, and some more slime, as well as some lava buckets which are quite possibly the best thing I could get right now, because I'd much rather have it in bucket form than getting it dropped onto me or getting thrown into a pit of it. So I grabbed them and immediately began trying to set the portal on fire. After a couple of minutes, the fire caught, and now we have access to the nether. But that was way, way harder than it should have been. So I spent the night sorting out my inventory and storage in preparation to head into the nether tomorrow. On the morning of day 7, I prepared myself and headed into the nether to find this just absolutely amazing spawn. I mean, look at this. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It's still better than a basalt delta, though. Ugh, hate those things. 
So I built myself a tiny, atrocious looking platform before drinking a hero's potion and throwing myself off into the lava below. That ended up working out pretty well, however you do still take 4 damage in lava and if this had been any shallower, I would have died to it. Anyways, I made my way to the mainland in search of some gravel, that ended up probably being the shortest search ever, finding some almost immediately. So I began lining my pockets with a whole bunch of it and probably grabbing more than I was gonna need. Then before leaving, I decided to grab some netherrack to use as some temporary building blocks until we make a cobblestone generator. Then on my way out, I spotted the terrifying sight of a ghast whilst bridging over to my portal with very explodable blocks. Once I got back home, I made a bunch of coarse dirt, broke it down into normal dirt and then placed down some saplings in a temporary tree farm. On the following day, I made a cobblestone generator and spent most of the day there just mining up cobble to grab as many building blocks as I could. After mining cobble all day, that evening I'd amassed quite a few stacks, so I made it into slabs and began replacing the floor of the tree farm with cobble because I get way too much anxiety standing on netherrack suspended above the void when I could easily break it with one misclick. After replacing the tree farm floor, on day 9 I took what cobblestone I had left over and began replacing all of the floor around the lucky block, because I get the same if not more anxiety standing on slime blocks. Now I made the floor out of slabs for two reasons, number 1 efficiency and number 2 I could waterlog them in case that the floor got blown up from underneath me and then I fell down into the void I can actually save myself. After finishing off the floor, I mined the lucky block for a little while, not really finding too much except some obsidian that I used to further secure the floor. And a bunch more sheep that I made a tiny little farm for, and now we have a renewable way to get wool for beds. Except we don't really, because they uh, don't have any access to grass, so that means that I'm gonna have to breed a whole new sheep just to get a few pieces of wool every time. More lucky blocks later, and I got a little shrine of them that ended up becoming two shrines and uh, almost suffocated my lucky cow. However, luckily for him, I uh, managed to save him. I guess the name does fit. Now, after carefully and cautiously clearing up the mess of the blocks, I ended up with a couple of chickens and 20 more diamonds. So I decided to sort out my inventory a little bit before chopping down a few trees and then spent the night once again at the cobblestone generator. After a sleepless night spent mining cobble, I spent a while of day 10 tidying up my island because it was pretty messy to the point where I was struggling to move around. Once things were a little bit tidier, I expanded out the island a little bit and built out a couple of pens for both the cows and the villagers. Now the cows deserve better than this, but uh, the villagers, this is already too good for them, because apparently they want to live in the nether instead of with me. Once everybody was moved over to their new area, I mined the blocks some more, finding a lucky pig who was clearly lying about being lucky because he suffocated in the floor. But we don't care about him because now I have a replacement to the deserter villager from earlier who I decided to buy some new boots and a helmet off of, but didn't use them just yet due to the anvil combining price being a little too steep for me right now. After having a pretty busy day, I spent the night organising my storage into a new area to try and get a little bit of organisation in all of this chaos. Alrighty, day 11. Uh, there is no day 11 because OBS and I had a pretty bad falling out and it decided not to record anything, instead just leaving me with a black screen and no audio. So here's a little quick rundown of what happened. I showed off my lovely new organized storage area and we also got a whole bunch of dogs that fell from the sky again, except this time only one was lost. But then tragedy struck and I got trapped in an obsidian water box right here and well that's where my end chest was with all my loot in there such as my diamonds and end portal frames along with the eyes. So basically everything I need to progress further into the game. So yeah, when it comes to progressing we're pretty much back at square one considering that I've lost everything. But I will give you a second to guess where I stored away the extra ender chest. Yep, that's right, it's, uh, it's in the end chest that's now no longer with us. So we have absolutely no way of recovering those things until we A get the materials or B get some more chests. But that's about all that happened on day 11. Didn't really miss much but I was pretty sad. So let's continue on with day 12 shall we? I got to work on building out an extension to the tree farm, that way we can actually stop being so broke on wood. But this platform ended up being quite the cobble gobbler and uh, well once I was done with it I had to spend a little while restocking and then I made a furnace to begin smelting down some logs into charcoal to actually light this place up at night. Now once the torches were acquired I decided to go and test my luck over at the block again and well would you look at this, the first block we break dropped an ender chest. I have absolutely no clue how lucky that was, but I feel like my entire life's worth of luck has been used up right there. Now with an ender chest back in my hands, I grabbed one and threw it in a normal chest and now we have access to all of our exquisite items once more. With the success of getting our goodies back, I spent the night doing the most fun thing to do in Skyblock. Yeah that's right, it's mining cobblestone, because I want to build a mob farm real soon and those things eat up building blocks. 
As the sun rose on day 13, tragedy almost struck as my forest of trees that had just grown caught on fire. So I acted quickly and managed to put it out, luckily with little to no damage caused. Once the fire was dealt with, I immediately moved the cobblestone generator and then began work on a little platform to start on building up the mob farm. Now I didn't really think that I'd have enough materials to get it done in one go, but I uh, used up all the stuff that I had and well, it, it didn't really go so far, so you know what that means? It's more cobble mining baby, let's go! You gotta love it. Love cobblestone mining, mmm, gets me through the day it does. You know, I wake up in the mornings and I'm like, you know what I want to do today? I want to mine cobblestone. It's so good. Try it. It's addicting, honestly. It's the best thing to do. It's, it's not boring. After yet another cobblestone mining session, by day 14, we were restocked and I also had a bunch of trees that had grown. So I chopped them down to use as trapdoors for later and then got back to work on building up the farm, absolutely tearing through my cobble stacks but making some pretty good progress before running out. Then I placed down all the trapdoors and spent the evening once more mining cobblestone, getting enough to finish off the farm that night. Now I did wait around to uh, see if some mobs would spawn so I could farm them out but uh, none did, absolutely nothing spawned so I went to check if anything was wrong but couldn't find a problem so I just left it for now. And on day 15 we got back to mining the block for a little while, getting some redstone stuff, an unlucky squid and a pretty nice sword as well as finally coming face to face with Bob who dropped a pretty decent chest plate that was once again way way too expensive to combine. So I threw it in the end chest until later, and then went to check on the mob farm that was still not working. At this point I don't even know if they work on this map, but I'll keep it here for a while just to be sure. And for now I spent the night chopping away at trees. On day 16 I made some shears and grabbed some wool from the sheep, as well as clearing up the floor behind the nether portal and making an absolute ton of dirt to use on a small farm for potatoes for the villagers, to see if they'll actually breed. Once I got the farm up and running, I threw the remaining food that I had over at the villagers and then broke some more blocks, finding a nether star, a whole bunch of lucky potions that ended up being pretty mid, and one of the horses just kind of spawned in and combusted out of nowhere and then fell into the void, it was, it was kind of weird. Oh my god, please stop with the dogs, I have so many! This tiny TNT explosion marked the end of the mining day and I headed to bed. Day 17 started out with me breaking down a hay bale into wheat and breeding the sheep, that way I can actually get some more wool. Then I headed back to the nether with my lucky bow to test it out, because I remembered that earlier it spawned a bunch of mobs and I wanted to see what else it could do, without risking the well-being of my island and everything that resides on it, so the nether is the only logical place to go. Now we didn't get anything crazy from this, mainly a bunch of mobs, a whole load of cobwebs that are actually super super useful to make beds for the villagers, but that's about it other than this poor chicken. So I headed home, crafted some beds and then expanded out the villagers home a little bit more before giving them the beds but uh, apparently they weren't good enough for the one guy who wanted to sleep in my bed. And well, I hope you're comfy buddy because stealing that bed will be the last thing you ever do. I awoke on day 18 to find that two of the villagers had merged together, just not in the way that I was hoping. So I decided to go and kill some time by doing some block mining, getting a whole bunch of rabbit stew and another shrine thingy. Now I don't actually know what they're called, but considering that there's four lucky blocks and it looks like a shrine, it's going to be called the lucky block shrine. Now it ended up spawning this thing, so uh, I flipped a lever and it was pretty kind, giving me a whole bunch of diamonds and emeralds. So I stored them away in a chest for later and wasted no time getting straight back to mining. Very quickly ending up with too many rabbits, another nether star and then a solution to the rabbit problem as well as a creeper that spawned in at the same time and I guess he didn't want to move and just kind of ended up getting char grilled there. But then this happened, probably the worst thing I've ever experienced. I was hit with blindness along with a whole other array of potion effects, diamond armor or not, I was about to die. So I popped my gapple, but these guys were absolutely relentless and just kept beating on me and it made the gapple look like nothing. So I guess this is how I go out. Nah, just kidding. Uh, I popped the hero's potion that made me practically unkillable and then began to fight back, ripping through the horde of horrors that surrounded me and now I'm not gonna lie, I was absolutely terrified every second, but finally the last mob fell and the blindness subsided, only for it to now be night for some reason. So I took a minute to calm down and patched up all the mess that they'd made and swore to always carry a milk bucket on me from this day onwards. That way I'm prepared for that to happen at any moment. After getting the milk I sorted through my storage and just chilled out for the rest of the night. Over the following few days I crafted and enchanted a second diamond pick, adding mending from it from the book chest and then spent all my time gathering as much cobblestone and wood as possible, because I was going to start work on a big build very soon. Oh and also the villagers did indeed breed, so that's going to make my life so, so much easier down the line. 
But now, on day 22, I was pretty stacked on materials, and it was finally time for me to start building up the main platform of our base. Now, this is probably going to end up being one of the bigger bases I built in a 100 days video, but that's okay, because it's going to be worth it. So, the plan for the minute was to build up circles around the lucky block in the center, expanding out in layers, and each layer will contain their own thing. But obviously for now, we don't have too many resources, so we can't go super far with it just yet. However, with the things that we had, I did end up making some pretty good progress over the couple days of building, and felt pretty good about how things were starting to turn out. Even though it's technically just a floating slab at this point in time, but it'll look good, trust me. On day 25, after taking a couple of days to gather materials and building up some of our new island, I still hadn't seen any mobs spawn from the farm, so I came to terms with the fact that it's probably never gonna work, and decided to spend the day tearing it down, and by that night it was gone, and the value of my land had increased due to that atrocious thing now being gone. On the following morning, I crafted a fletching table and gave the newly grown villager a job, definitely for his benefit and not for mine, to make an unbelievable amount of profit from very little work, and then him having no choice but to sell me things over and over and over again every single day until his inevitable demise. <coughs> oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, I made him a Fletcher and traded a whole bunch of sticks for emeralds, before then breaking the lucky block some more, getting another dragon egg, followed by a bunch more spawn eggs, and Bob, who really isn't having a good time in this video. My man fell into the void, got trapped behind a gate, and now returns, only to get stuck in the floor. Poor guy. After Bob sadly went bye-bye again, I found some quartz and music discs, and then it happened again, and I, I just couldn't bear to watch. Well, I think I'll leave the block there for today, because it's a uh, well. Get it? Oh, God. Terrible jokes aside, I spent a good while chopping down all the trees that had grown, as well as digging up all the crops to clear some space for the new build, and then ended up spending most of the night adding another circle to our new island. Day 27 sat out with me filling in the floor of the new circle, because that was going to become the home for all of our storage really soon, because I'm finding out that uh, we're going to need a lot of space this time around, just down to the sheer randomness of the drops that we get. So after finishing off all that I could for now, that took quite a while due to the annoying wood pattern I decided to go with, I added a small wall around it, made a bunch of chests, and then spent the night sorting through some storage before finally heading to bed. Then on day 28, I began expanding out the temporary island behind the villagers, to expand out the breeder a little bit more because I want a lot of them, and I don't want to add a breeder to the new build because they take up a lot of space and never really look good. So I'll just move them over there once I've got a whole bunch of them. Now, once I finished their expansion, it didn't look great, but they need to work to deserve better from me. So I used what little string I had to make another bed, and realized that that's probably going to be one of the bigger problems here, is the absolute lack of wool to make beds. But I'm sure I'll figure out an efficient way to get my hands on some. After giving them their new bed, I moved my ludicrous amount of dogs over to the new island, and ended up finding one lime wool in a chest in the process. So I made it into another bed and gave it to the villagers before trading with the Fletcher some more and spending the rest of the day expanding out the tree farm, that way we can increase our profits from the villagers. Day 29 started out by breaking a lucky block that was, uh, anything but lucky. Oh no, 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 please, no, no! Now, I was expecting that to happen at some point, but I thought that I'd made the center wide enough for it to be contained, but evidently not. So I assume this is possibly going to become a common occurrence, but that's okay because it's really cheap and easy to fix and not annoying in any capacity. After patching things up, I spotted an iron golem down at the villager breeder, which is a pretty good sign that they're multiplying, and soon I shall rule over this blocky domain with an iron fist made from the remains of your shiny oversized blocky protector. I decided to rebuild the nether portal temporarily when I heard another one of them spawn in and start taking damage, so I ran over and saved him. You will die when I allow you to die, and not a minute sooner. And look at that, look how much easier it is to light the portal with a flint and steel. Now I spent the rest of the day chopping wood when our faithful diamond axe, Axie, broke. Farewell my old friend, you can never be replaced. Hey look, it's Axie 2, but this time even better with Unbreaking and an actual name, considering I just made up the character about 4 seconds ago. Also, the O in his name is silent, don't worry about it and don't question it. On the morning of day 30, my main goal was finishing off my lovely wooden floor that I thought would take a lot longer than it actually did. After the floor was done, I made some more fletching tables and put my newly fully grown villagers to work. Then chopped down all the trees that had grown, made the wood into sticks and proceeded to make bank. Also, I'm pretty happy with how things are coming along so far, it's going pretty good. So on day 31, I decided to put my silk touch pickaxe to use and grabbed a whole bunch of lucky blocks without opening them and took them into the nether, because I wanted to test out whether or not it'd be easier or safer to open them in there. Mainly just down to how much extra space we're going to have to run away from the demons that this thing can spawn. But in my search for an easier solution to break them, I ended up committing a crime and somehow having water spawn in the nether. 
Now that was extremely cursed, but I also kind of like it. So I broke some more blocks in here, finding some enchanted gapples, you know, nothing too special or anything. And then we were greeted by another well and almost got blown up by a bunch of TNT. If that one block hadn't launched me about 20 foot away, I'm pretty sure I'd be dead right now. Now, this turn of events would usually make most people say, hey, you know what, maybe that's enough for the lucky block mining for now, uh, but that's not me, and I continued on breaking them, getting a pretty nice sword, along with some XP, and another one of these godforsaken things. Along with a whole bunch of sheep that I slapped up for their wool. Yeah, I know it's not matching, but it'll end up adding up over time, and eventually we can make it into beds. After I was finished dealing with the sheep, I broke the final blocks, placed down all the quartz ore that I gathered during this time to mine later. Then I grabbed all the things that I wanted from the nether right now and began heading back home, slapping a chicken off my bridge to make some KFC. Once I arrived back home, I made another bed for the villagers, stored away some of my loot and attempted to combine the two saws that I had, but uh, I, was, I was way, way too poor, so I just called it a day. On day 32, me and Axie 2 went to town with these trees, chopping down as many as possible and then turning them into sticks to trade with the Fletchers, as well as sacrificing a bookshelf to make a lectern, that way we can get this guy to become a librarian when he grows up. But for now, he can enjoy his childhood. But remember, if you ever attempt to go against my will and my career choices for you, then you shall meet the same fate as your so-called protector. Anyways, I bred the cow some more and then broke the lucky block to be immediately greeted with some TNT straight off the bat. Great! After patching things up, I did go back to breaking the block, getting some very useful hay bales because I was running pretty low on wheat for the cows, and a bunch of llamas that I dispatched for leather, followed by even more llamas that met the same fate as their former brethren. Then attempted to combine the swords again, but found that I was only one level off. So I went back to mining the block in search of a little bit more XP. That was until I got blown up again and decided to go and find the XP elsewhere. Once I was stacked up, I combined the swords, chopped down all the trees and headed to bed. Then in the morning, I went to check up on our little villager friend to see if he'd grown up yet, but he hadn't. However, I still have patience, so decided to do something productive whilst waiting. So I put the leather that I gathered yesterday to use and made a bunch of item frames to put on the chests and then spent the day organizing our storage and expanding out our neat new area. After clearing up the storage all day, that night I went around lighting things up and adding a stone brick layer above the wall as well as adding more lights around it just to make things a little bit brighter, that way I can actually see at night. And then once again in the morning went to check up on our little villager buddy to find that he'd actually fully grown up. So I began refreshing his trades but didn't actually know what I was looking for and just decided to leave him on this very mid one right here and got straight to trading grabbing a whole bunch of bookshelves, lanterns and glass, leveling this guy up extremely quickly. After storing all the trade loot away and placing down the bookshelves around the enchantment table, I took my bow back into the nether to try and get some more string or spiders to spawn so that I can actually make some more beds for the villagers. Now I ended up immediately spawning in some more water in here as well as getting a few mobs that I dealt with very easily all thanks to my new sword, but then managed to mess up the nether even more by spawning in two literal meteors absolutely decimating this poor creeper. Some more water and another meteor later and we finally got some string. So I grabbed all of it, shot a few more arrows, spawning in a bunch of mobs that ended up dealing with themselves, before finally hitting a zombie pigman with an explosion, but luckily he didn't aggro. So with that close call, I decided to return home, made all the beds I could for the villagers, and then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone and wood. Then on the morning of day 35, I returned to the villagers to do some more trading, but their trades hadn't refreshed. So I just decided to go and do a little bit of work over on the new island until I ran out of stone and returned to the villagers to find that they had actually restocked. So I grabbed a whole bunch more glass and lanterns to finish fully leveling him up and now that he's maxed out we have access to name tags but can't afford them right now. So I gave them some more food to breed them and then we shall give them more jobs to make more money. After dealing with the villagers I spent a while finishing off the lair I was working on and grabbing some more wood because I swear in any kind of skyblock wood is like the only thing that matters. On the following day, I broke all the bones that I had down into bone meal and grew a bunch of trees for wood, because the next part of this build was going to need an ungodly amount of it. After using up all the bone meal whilst waiting for some more trees to grow, I mined the lucky block some more, getting some spawn eggs and another shrine. But now I have a much better and safer way of dealing with these things and just pick them up with silk touch, that way I can avoid opening them and uh, having an explosive disaster near the things that I don't want to break or lose. After replacing the floor back with stone bricks, I broke the block again, only to get another shrine. So I tidied it up and took it as a sign not to break any more blocks today. 
and instead put my old diamond boots on and took to the soul sand valleys of the nether in search of skellies to farm out for bones, so that I can grab a bunch more wood much more efficiently. Now whilst in here I uh, shot a load of skellies out of my bow at a ghast, killing it and in the process giving me a bunch more bones, so that was pretty helpful and interesting. However, after being in the nether all night and most of the morning of day 37, I returned home and put the bones to use by spending the whole day growing and chopping down trees over and over and over again until I ran out of bone meal. And by that evening, we'd amassed quite the hefty amount of wood and was planning to start work on the next part of the build in the morning. So that night, I gave one of the new villagers a job and then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone. And now, as the sun was rising on day 38, I broke some planks down into slabs and began work on the next layer, making the outline of the circle and then filling in the floor with wood. Now I'm sure that you see that we're already burning through the stuff that we chopped down yesterday and this isn't even the expensive part. Once the floor was finished, it was actually time to start work on the area where these villagers are actually going to end up spending their days. Now this is the expensive part, okay, because it's only logs and stairs and they absolutely tear through your supply. Also, you may notice that there was a little fire going on right here uh, because I built it right next to the cobblestone generator and didn't notice it for like five minutes, but yeah, that was scary, but it was easily fixed. Then I got straight back to work on stripping all the logs, making and placing all the stairs that I could around the pillars, and then went around adding trapdoors in the middle just to add a little bit of design and finesse before then expanding out three blocks behind every hole and adding even more stairs in between and on top of them. Then I put a little stone brick trim on the wall and added whatever stairs I had left over on top of the others before deciding to call it a day, because I had completely run out of wood. But I think that we made some insanely good progress and I really, really love how this thing's turning out. It's definitely one of my better looking ones and I really like the, uh, the wooden circle design. But we aren't done yet and I'm only expecting it to get better from here. After doing a whole bunch of building, on day 41, I set a bunch of cobble smelting down into stone and decided to try mining the blocks some more, getting annoyed almost immediately, but that's okay because shortly after we found a beacon and some flowers with some grass blocks that I went around placing in the inner circle. That way we can actually have some greenery going around here and once it's all covered in grass, we can add some flowers to it. But for now, it's back to mining, where we found a whole bunch of skelly horses that will 100% be used to feed my trees, and, well, Bob, who spawned back in again, but this time with gifts making you richer. Your death was meaningful this time, my drippy friend. We love you. However, we do not love you, but you can't really hurt me anymore, so that kind of sucks for you. Hey, look at the pork chop tower. I was running pretty low on them. Also, apparently I have a child now. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, there he goes. Well, I'm not going to complain about that. <clears throat> One less mouth to feed. So I decided that that was probably enough lucky block mining for me today and noticed that my stone didn't smelt in the furnaces and I really don't have a way to light them. That was until I had another gigabrain idea and made a whole bunch of buckets, took them into the nether and grabbed a ton of lava, brought it back home and put one bucket in each furnace, essentially giving me a near infinite fuel source. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So I then spent the rest of the night restocking on some wood. On day 42, I headed back over to the villagers and did a little bit more trading, not really getting many emeralds. Then I decided it was time to cull the cow population, taking care to avoid hitting the lucky ones, but unfortunately accidents happen and sadly, I uh, ended up insta-grilling one of the lucky cows into a steak. So in my sadness, I made a memorial sign. It's not much, but I'll never forget my lucky cow. After that very tasty tragedy, I moved the anvils over to the new build and spent some time mining the block. And wowee, what a mining session this was. I, I just keep getting villagers and witches and turning villagers into witches. It, it wasn't a good day. That was made even worse considering that I got stuck in an obsidian water trap again, so I had to spend an absolute lifetime clearing that up. After the obby was gone, we were greeted by yet another flying horseman and some rainbow sheep that were kind of helpful because of their wool. But after getting the sheep, my luck took a turn for the better and I was gifted an entire stack of diamonds along with a bunch of other goodies. But that luck did not last long and I had to spend about 5 minutes dealing with this rip off of a slime that did some pretty nasty damage, but hey, at least I got another beacon to add to my collection. Also, I spent the night doing my favourite thing in the entire world. After my pretty atrocious luck yesterday, on day 43, I decided to take a break from everything and just spent the day filling in all the soon-to-be villager rooms with the remaining wood that I had, because it really did need to be done and I didn't want to risk doing anything else in case my luck was so bad that I just glitched through the floor and fell to my demise. But anyways, by nightfall, all the rooms were filled in and looking a lot more full, I guess is the only word that I can use to describe it, things looked a lot better and a lot fuller. 
then in the morning, I made some bone meal and began growing some grass up around the inner ring. Once I was happy with how that looked, I grabbed all the flowers that we had and got to work on placing them down. Now that all the grass is spread all around and we have some flowers placed down, I really like the look of it and I think it really adds some good colour. So I added some paths and then spent the rest of the day marking out the final circle with whatever wood we had left over and connected the four corners to the outer edge. Day 45 started out with me building a platform outside of the villager breeder in hopes of me using my lucky bow on it and spawning in a zombie, to actually help me make trades much cheaper. But after a while of shooting arrows at the platform for I, I don't even know how long, I think I kinda just zoned out at this point, we ended up with some pretty bad luck, mainly just getting meteors that were a pain to get rid of, but eventually, that evening I was graced with the presence of some zombies. That I attempted to trap and use as villager bait, but um, yeah, no, I ended up killing them both. So out of pure curiosity, I went and decided to check the egg chest where I found a zombie spawn egg from earlier. So um, yeah, that kind of just made my entire day pointless. So that night, I made a little temporary area to use to infect and cure my villagers. And once it was done and ready, I lured them in there and then began making the preparations to cure them. So I grabbed a name tag for a zombie that I now named Hondo, but don't get too attached to him because he doesn't last long. Then I cooked up some weakness potions, turned them into splash ones, and before I knew it, the sun was rising. So in the morning, I headed back over to them and made one a cartographer, and then did a little bit of trading with him to level him up to the point of where he can sell me emeralds for glass. And then infected them both, immediately cured them, and then said goodbye to Hondo. And now, we just wait for them to cook. In the morning, I crafted down all the glass that I could into panes and broke the lucky block a little to kill time whilst waiting for the villagers to be cured. Now, I ended up getting some more spawn eggs, and as I was storing them away, I got the achievement for curing a villager, so I ran over to them, wasting no time in making some big trades. Now, it's not the most efficient emerald trade cycle just yet, but uh, I accidentally dealt with Hondo, so uh, yeah, I I'll need another zombie if I want to make it better. But this is still way more efficient than anything else I've done so far. After trading all of their stock for the day, I combined up my armor that I got a while ago, and now we're just slightly more OP. Even though I'd still need to do it with every single other piece, but that's way too expensive and I really don't have the XP right now. Once I was done with the armor, I gave the villagers some more food and headed to bed. Once I got up, I did some more training with the villagers, be it for a slightly scammy price. I don't know why it changed, but thankfully it doesn't stay like that for long. After getting swindled for my emeralds, I uh, grabbed four name tags and began naming some of my dogs after you peeps. So here are the four names of the dogs so far, and as always, if you want to be a dog, a frog, or really any other type of animal or mob, then be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to try my best to make it happen. And also, I just want to take a minute to say thank you all so much for watching and making this past year so amazing. I love and appreciate you all so much and I cannot thank you enough for watching, it really does mean the world to me and you're all just awesome. Now, after naming the dogs, I began clearing up the platform I used to spawn the mobs in earlier because it was nothing but an eyesore and I wanted it gone. Once it was cleared up, I headed back into the nether to grab some wool that I stored away earlier to see if I had enough to combine with the stuff that I have in the overworld to make a few more beds for the villagers. And I actually did, surprisingly, so I crafted three of them and gave them to the villagers and then chopped down my trees and spent the night mining the block again, dealing with another flying skelly boy and making a grindstone to disenchant his armor to get some free XP. But other than another minor explosion, we really didn't get much else. So on the morning of day 49, I patched up the floor, <coughs> removed some horses, and uh, began mining the block some more, getting a giant lucky block that caused a giant hole. So that I had to spend a while fixing that. But after the hole was all fixed up, I gave the villagers some more food and did a little bit more trading before then spending the rest of the day chopping wood and gathering cobblestone. I'm telling you materials, you just can't get enough of them. On the morning of day 50, I made myself a shiny new golden helmet and headed back into the nether grabbing any and all glowstone that I could find, because I want to make a lot of redstone lanterns and for them I need glowstone. After grabbing probably more than enough, I headed back home to find that the sun was already rising on day 51. So I cleared out my inventory from yesterday and mined a couple of lucky blocks before disaster struck again, killing and damaging a whole bunch of wolves. So I did my best to heal up the ones that were lucky enough to survive and then began patching things up again, thinking about how it was probably quite a bad idea putting that cursed thing in the middle of my lovely new home. Once the floor was all patched up, I added a little wall around the center to try and dampen the blow of any further TNT blasts and moved my dogs to a safer place and then continued on mining, getting even more dogs and then another explosion, followed by even more dogs and then possibly the single biggest explosion so far. So needless to say, I decided to stop mining right there and instead had to spend the whole night patching things up because it was a mess this time, alright? It was, it was bad this time. 
on the following day, I did an absolutely big brain move once again and used my silk touch pickaxe to grab a whole load of the lucky blocks and took them into the nether to open them there, because I am absolutely sick of patching up the floor. Now, the main thing that I was looking for from these blocks was redstone, so that I could actually make the, you know, the redstone lanterns, because I really don't have too much of it right now. But my luck in the nether didn't seem any better. Shortly after starting, some TNT went off, absolutely decimating this poor baby zombie. However, this upset Papa Zombie as he returned once again to seek vengeance. I'm sorry, buddy, but you bring this on yourself. After dealing with our good old friend Bob, I uh, had the closest call so far to this magma cube. It absolutely slapped me down to four hearts, so uh, I shot some TNT at it. Then this skelly right here probably made the biggest mistake of its life by hitting a pigman, very quickly sealing his own fate. I don't know what he thought would happen. Two extremely nice and lucrative wishing wells later, and now we have some bedrock and cats. But don't get too attached for them because they really don't last long. I told you they didn't last long. What a terrible way to go out. Now, I did end up finding some redstone, but shortly after got jumped by a whole load of mobs again. But this time I was prepared and they really weren't too scary. And I've managed to escape pretty easily. Now, after finishing off the last of the blocks, I headed home and stored away all of my goodies, and on day 53, I made a whole bunch of levers and then went around placing down all the redstone lamps that I had around the top of the villagers' new home. After they were all placed, I spent the rest of the evening and night moving some of the villagers over from the breeder into their new trading holes. Now, these guys are usually the worst thing in the world to move, but they were surprisingly cooperative this time around, and it wasn't absolutely infuriatingly mind-numbing to move them. And so, by the morning of day 54, I managed to move over most of the villagers into their new homes, and didn't want to throw myself off my base and into the void. So I decided to reward myself for the back-breaking work I did last night and combined the two chest plates that I had, getting a Giga OP one, and then decided to dedicate the rest of the day to tree farming because I really want to finish off the final layer of the build ASAP. So I used up all my bones and chopped down so, so many trees. And then over the following couple days, I grinded out finishing off the final layer, filling in the floor with slabs, building up walls all the way around the outside, de dealing with another fire that somehow started. And finally, adding a roof over the top of everything, adding some stone planters to the top of it that I can use to plant trees and flowers. You know, just to add a little bit of variety from all the wood that was used. Now, the build's not done yet, but at least the big resource intensive and heavy parts are kind of out of the way. And we've made some pretty good progress, so, you know, we can be much more chilled out about finishing off the rest. On day 58, I did some more training with the villagers, as well as giving the ones up top their profession blocks before then finding a wandering trader that just so happened to be selling some spruce saplings. So I grabbed some, and then decided to grab some more lucky blocks and take them back into the nether again in search of more redstone, because my supply was completely gone. Now, this time around, the blocks weren't quite as explosive, but instead were pretty nice to me, giving me quite a lot of diamonds, as well as a bit of XP, before finally giving me a decent amount of redstone. But sadly, we did lose whatever remaining cats we had in there in the process. After using up all the lucky blocks and getting jumped by an army of silverfish and endermites, I put all the TNT that I've been gathering from drops from the lucky blocks to use, and went in search of ancient debris. Alright, so I'm just gonna say both of our time right here, uh, I found one piece of ancient debris. That was it. That was it. So I headed home with my singular piece of ancient debris. When I got back, I found that it was already morning, so I grabbed all my dogs and moved them into the newly built up area. And also, I think this is the most dogs I've ever had, like, tamed at one time. It's a bit ridiculous, but I shall protect them and keep them safe nonetheless. With the dogs now gathered up safe and sheltered, I repaired our good friend Axie too, and did a slight bit of work on a hallway that may lead to another island in future, it just depends on where I want to build the nether portal. But for now, it's just a hole in the wall. After finishing up with that, I made and placed down the rest of the other redstone lamps, and spent the evening trading with the villagers again. But this time, the good prices had returned, and they were no longer scamming me. Oh, and I also put a couple of trees in the planters too. But now, day 60, it's become that time again. It's storage day, baby! Let's go! Everybody loves storage day, you gotta love storage day, you gotta celebrate storage day too. Storage day is a good day. Good day, day 60, storage day. So, needless to say, in the title of the day, I literally spent most of the day sorting through and tidying up my storage before then putting my stockpile of beacons to use by going around and placing them down around the perimeter of the island. And then real quick traded for a few pieces of glass from the villagers that I then placed down, making some windows behind the entrances to the outer circle. And then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone. On day 61, I set the cobble off smelting and proceeded to do some more trading to pass time. Once the cobble was all smelted down, I crafted some stone into bricks and stairs and finished off adding the rest of the planters up top because them being half finished was really annoying me. So after dedicating a while to building them up, they were all finished. However, I didn't have the dirt to fill them in. So I repaired my shovel and aptly named it Gravel Gobbler, because that's exactly what it's gonna do. 
So I headed back into the nether and went to town digging up way more gravel than I was ever going to need. But hey, he's called Gravel Gobbler for a reason. After grabbing, or gobbling, all the gravel, I headed back home and the sun had risen on day 62. So I made and broke down coarse dirt into real dirt and finished off the planters with trees and grass and to top it all off added some more beacons and now this thing looks really nice. Then I grabbed some more glass and that night used my phantom spawn egg in hopes of getting a membrane. And I ended up getting two thanks to looting. Then made myself some slow falling potions and thought about where to put the end portal because I can't move it once it's placed so it kind of needs to be a dedicated space and actually planned out. So on the following couple days I decided that the portal deserved its own themed island but I can't really get the end themed blocks until I actually go there. So I was just planning on building it out of a crappy looking temporary block for now until I can actually get the ones that I want to build with. But before we get on to that, I uh, decided to name this zombie horse that had been roaming around my lands for a while. Uh, I called him Newt and then put him inside with the other ones. I think he looks pretty cool and I don't see these things often enough. And well, I kind of like the name Newt. It's kind of unique and it, it suits him, I guess. Maybe? I don't know. It's a zombie horse, man. Then I got to work on building up the temporary platform for the end portal, not filling it in fully because it would just be a waste of time. Then I built up the portal and added the eyes only for it not to light. So I was left with no other choice than to beg the lucky block for it to spawn in. And oh, would you look at that? There's an end portal there now. There's definitely no help from mods. Alrighty, so this is future poppers right now and I'm going to pause things right here. So apparently I built the portal wrong. And I didn't know that you had to build it in a specific way with the blocks all connecting in a certain way. I've been playing this game for almost a decade and literally have it as my job. And I had absolutely no idea that I was building them wrong this entire time. So I'm an absolute idiot and I'll build them correctly in future. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I'm just a complete idiot and I didn't know that you had to build them correctly. So this is my bad um, and it could have been avoided. So with the portal now lit, I gathered what I'd need for the fight. And on the morning of day 65, I popped my potions and headed in. Now shooting down the towers this time around was made a little bit easier due to this bow. However, I'm still not a great shot. So I did have to pillow up to some of them to get them. But then once the pillars were all gone, I took the fight to the dragon, firing a whole barrage of arrows at it, missing every single one of them. I told you I'm not a great shot. But after landing enough hits on the dragon, it came into perch and I managed to get some pretty good damage off with my sword. However, I didn't realize that my slow falling potion had worn off and the dragon yeeted me into the air and I took some pretty yucky fall damage. So I ate some food and regened a little bit of health before continuing on with the fight. Snapping the dragon before getting another perch that ended in the exact same way with me getting launched with no slow falling potion to break my fall. But after regening and hitting a few more shots, with one final barrage of arrows, the dragon fell. So I grabbed all the XP and went to break a lucky block that I spotted in here, before then taking the gateway to the Outer End Islands in search of the Elytra, where I spotted a whole bunch of lucky blocks just scattered all the way around. I can't even escape them all the way out here. After almost losing everything to an Enderman and popping a gapple to save myself, I continued on with the search, breaking some lucky blocks along the way. I mean, hey, I may as well, there's nothing else out here, so it's the perfect testing ground. Now, in the search for a city, I found a new axe that puts Axie 2 to shame, but don't worry, buddy, I will make you better. After the axe, I found a very speedy horse that didn't get very far, and after searching around the islands for a while, eventually found a city. So I made my way in, dealing with the shulkers and grabbing some pretty mid loot, before then grabbing the elytra, and just before leaving, grabbed a whole bunch of purple and endstone. After stacking up on the blocks, I returned home on the morning of day 65, and immediately upgraded Axie with the one that I got in the end, as well as combining two pair of leggings. Then I sorted out my inventory and did some trading with my lovely villagers. And then over the following couple of days, I worked on building up the end portal island. But I noticed that the portal was built slightly off center, so I had to move everything back one block before I could actually get to work on building everything up. Now, I decided to go with the purple and endstone brick theme to kind of match what they have with the cities, but not exactly the same. But oh my days, was this absolutely hell to build. First off, I noticed it was too far back, but after them building for like 10 minutes, I noticed it was one block too low, so then I had to go around and move everything up by one block. But after fixing that, the rest of the build went pretty smoothly, getting everything finished off by day 69. And well, I think it was definitely worth the extra time because I'm really, really happy with how this came out. I think it really fits the theme of the portal. On day 70, I realized that I never finished placing down the fences around the top of the outer ring. So I grabbed a bunch of wood and made as many fences as I could, making more than enough to finish off the outline. After dealing with the fences, I broke some flowers down into yellow and orange dye and made some stained glass. 
before then heading back to the nether to grab the quartz from earlier and added it around the lucky block in the center to make it look better I guess I didn't really like it it didn't really look that good so it's not staying by the time the glass was placed down the sun was rising on day 71 so I decided to grab myself a bunch of lucky blocks and take them into the end because it's just a much better place to open them than the nether now I really wasn't looking for anything specific I just wanted to open a whole bunch of these things in a safe ish place I ended up finding this treasure map right here that I'm sure is going to be extremely useful and come in very handy for us 100% we're definitely going to find this treasure along with a couple of wells that gave me a bunch of goodies and Bob we love you Bob but you gotta stop coming at me like this it's not right after dealing with Bob once again, I found a load more flowers, so I crafted a chest and threw them in there because I was going to need a lot of dyes for something I had planned. One killer rabbit and a giant later and I was almost dead, so I had to pop another gapple. Also, during this block breaking spree, I found a couple more beacons and even more dogs that, well, let's just say they're not coming home. However, when some cats spawned in, I decided to stop breaking blocks for now and brought some of them home because I don't have any yet and they look cute. On day 72, I repaired Gravel Gobbler and returned back into the nether to begin stocking up on all the building blocks I was going to need to build the nether portal island. First, I gobbled up some soul sand and some soul soil for the base, then took to the basalt deltas to grab some basalt and the warped forest to grab some warped stems, and then when I was heading back home, stopped off back at the basalt delta to grab a little bit of blackstone, before then heading back home and crafting all the blocks that I was going to need to build the island. But before that, on the following day, all those flowers I stored away in the end came into use as I broke them all down into a rainbow of dyes and made some stained glass and then went around placing one block following a rainbow pattern above every single beacon and I mean now just look how freaking cool this looks alright I'm so pleased with it it looks so good anyways enough basking in the glory of the beacons it's time to get back to work so I spent that night building up the outline of the nether island and filling in the floor to begin building up the portal in the morning. So over the next couple of days, I got to work on building the portal. Now the design for this portal was originally created by Seekai, so huge shout out to them. I'm a huge, huge fan of this portal frame and I think it'll look really, really good on an island of its own. And if you like it and you're interested in building it for yourself, then I'll be sure to leave a link to the tutorial in the top right of the screen right now and in the description down below. So definitely go check that out. Anyways, after building up the main structure, I headed back into the nether to grab a bunch of bones from skellies and fossils around the Soul Sand Valley. Then brought them back home to build my very own fossils, completing the island by day 76, and it looking pretty good too. I'm very happy with this one. Now on day 77, I combined two pair of boots before feeding the villagers some more potatoes and then spent most of the day clearing off and removing the old island because it was no longer needed considering that I have everything set up on the new one. I started off day 78 by making some big changes to the center of the island by adding some small ponds in each corner and then adding a little bit of detail onto the bridges that connect to the center. I just wasn't happy with the old design anymore and wanted to fill things out and have it look a little bit less empty. Once the center was done, I spent a little while adding more item frames to the chest and expanding out the storage a bit more and did a little bit of organization before grabbing a tadpole spawn egg and popping it down in the water and soon we shall have a fully grown frog named Polo. After naming the frog, well, tadpole right now, on day 79, I decided to move the last villagers over into their new permanent trade halls. That once again went significantly smoother than I was expecting it to go, so I managed to get them all set up and locked into their slots by the morning of day 80. Then spent a good while matching up the profession blocks to the villagers and giving the ones that hadn't got any jobs new ones so that they can actually be useful to me. And now, finally, the villagers are set up. So, in celebration, I grabbed the rest of the loose lucky blocks I had laying around and took them into the end to open them up in search of some sea lanterns. And whilst looking for those, I ended up finding some gapples as well as two back-to-back -back sea lantern spawns and then got jumped by a ton of silverfish and endermites that ended up triggering the endermen who began screaming and running to my aid. After blowing up some dogs, I'd got what I came here for. So, I headed back home to place down the lanterns when I found this absolute mess. I don't know why they're all here, but they are and I don't like like it. So I went on a purge getting rid of these extremely loud pests. Once they were dealt with, I went around placing down all the lanterns and things were looking pretty nice. Just ignore the remains of the mobs from earlier. So with another successful day under my belt, I stored some loot away and headed to bed, being reminded of the tragedy that happened earlier that day. I woke up on day 81 to find that our new tadpole was now fully grown. So I said hi to him and gave him a slime ball before checking up on the amount of wither skelly skulls that we had, but I only ended up having one. So I grabbed some blocks and headed into the nether in search of a fortress. 
However, shortly after getting in there, I uh, stumbled across this atrocious biome and just wasn't having it, so I just bridged over it. Now, I'm once again going to save you time. Uh, I was looking in here for a while and didn't find a fortress or any signs of one, but I'm pretty sure that they can't spawn in this world. So I just made my way back home and spent the night gathering more lucky blocks. That way I can use them to get the skulls because they can spawn as a random drop. On the following morning, I had five stacks of them. So I took them to the end and began breaking my way through them to find the wither skulls. And oh boy, was this eventful. We immediately got jumped by some guardians, popping a gapple just for in case, and uh, then two more spawned, falling to their demise. And then I got exactly what I asked for. Uh, the wither just spawned in from a lucky block out of nowhere, scaring the absolute life out of me. I didn't know that this was a thing at all, but I quickly realized that this was no normal wither. This guy was fast and really, really OP because you can't outrun it and you can barely damage it. Because he just goes around at super speed attacking all the endermen in here and, well, his health regenerates really quickly and because he's moving so fast, you can barely damage this guy, let alone kill him. So after having no luck with that, I retreated to the outer end islands to open up some more lucky blocks in search of one of the evil potions. Because it seems like they do insane damage and could be one of the only ways I can put an end to this guy if they even work. So I broke more blocks, finding some more gapples, an efficiency book, and the potions. So then I prepared myself to return and try and kill the wither. But once I arrived, I threw the potion and missed. Who saw that coming? Also, look at this guy. I have speed three and he's keeping up with me. What are these hacks, my guy? I'm on to you. Check him, PC. Now, I did manage to escape the wither very briefly and headed home to check if I had another evil potion laying around, and I did. So, I made my way back to the end and attempted another attack. But once I threw the potion, I'm pretty sure it just phased through this man right here and did nothing. So, that wasn't good and I had to retreat, only escaping the end seconds before the wither could have followed through the portal. I don't actually know if they can come through, but he was damn close. And with that, I decided to never return to the end, or at least for a little while. On day 86, I put some of the leaves that I'd gathered quite a while ago to use and added some more greenery around the inner of the circle, and then made a very small temporary tree farming spot and used bone meal to grab a whole bunch of spruce and oak for the rest of the day. Then, on the following day, I put all the wood to use by upgrading the interior of the outer circle. Now, this isn't my proudest work, but it looks better than it did, and that's good enough for me, considering that I'll probably never even go in there anyway. Alrighty, day 90, the beginning of the end. I repaired my pickaxe and returned to the nether with some lucky blocks to try my luck searching for netherite again. Now you may be wondering, hey poppers, why did you bring the lucky blocks to search for netherite? Well, I wanted to see if it would be any use to me trying to use the explosive drops that I can get from them to clear out some areas. But I quickly found out, after breaking almost a whole stack before getting any boom boom, that it didn't really do much. So I returned to my old ways and began flailing my pickaxe around sporadically in search of any and all ancient debris that I could find. But after absolutely eating through my pick's durability and finding pretty much nothing, I decided to call it a day and began heading home, throwing myself into lava along the way because even without netherite, I'm super OP and I can. Day 91 was pretty much a wasted day. I uh, went and decided to go and open the remaining lucky blocks that I had to see what other building blocks I could find, but didn't really get much other than some diamonds, gold and emeralds as well as a few bad luck booms. Now, in the following couple days, I realized that I didn't actually have a house, and, well, I kind of wanted one. So, I spent a little while grabbing some more wood, both spruce and oak, as well as grabbing the leaves and rebuilding a temporary cobblestone generator and restocking on that. Then, smelting it down into stone and crafting some bricks. After gathering all the materials I was going to need, on day 95, I got to work on building up the house. Starting out by making a platform of dirt and adding a few grass blocks around it, before then starting to build the actual structure of the house. Now, once again, if you're interested in building this house for yourself, then definitely go check out the channel that I've linked in the top right and down in the description for the house tutorial if you're interested in wanting a super nice looking house that's also really, really small. After building up the house for a while, I grabbed the dogs and brought them over and then finished off the structure of the house and got to work on the garden, adding a wall that's going to encase everything inside, as well as some paths and flowers and a small little fountain around the back. And boom, here's the house. It's now done and looking pretty good. It's not much, but it's very quaint and it looks really nice. Plus, I don't really have a ton of space to work with right here, nor a ton of time. So, yeah, there it is. So, I grabbed my bed and spent that night over at the new house. Day 99. After building up the house, I took the cats over there, naming one Bonk, who shall serve as the guardian of the land in my absence. Then, I headed back into the end to rescue some of the cats in there from the wither, successfully evading it and getting them home safely but then noticed that a second frog that I got whilst building up the house had gone missing, so I went around looking for him, but couldn't find him, even checking the nether to no avail. 
so I have absolutely no clue where he went and took my anchor out on the water chickens. But then, as I was about to give up hope, I heard some froggy sounds nearby the villagers, and still he eludes me. But then I checked inside the outer circle, and he was there just chilling and completely fine. After reuniting with the frog, I moved the final cats over to the house, grabbed some more name tags from the librarian, and then put them to use by using my spawn eggs and naming three axolotls. One was called Slippy, the other one was called Ploppy, and the third one was called Bazar. before then taking in the orange glow of the final sunset in this world. Hey, and would you look at that, it's day 100. We've come so far from having nothing, cowering on a little platform, terrified of the blocky gods, to now thriving with villagers to trade with, dogs, cats, frogs, and axolotls to keep us company, and a whole bunch of cool builds surrounding us. So I got up and dealt with the villager that stole my bed earlier, before saying thank you to the most helpful villagers by giving them a little window, and then decided to break one final lucky block. Oh, shit.